G'day, I'm Paul. Since we shot our last video on the new Ford Everest, we have more information and I've taken it for a quick drive around Ford's proving grounds. So today I'm gonna to take you through everything we know so far and everything you need to know about the new Ford Everest, along with a quick drive off-road at Ford's proving ground in Australia. Now, if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you could scroll down and use the chapters below. Down in the description as well is where you're gonna find links to the rest of our Everest and Ranger content as well. But if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon, let's get started. So let's kick off with pricing. We've already had a look at the outside design and some of the features that are gonna come with Everest, but I think pricing is important. And to be honest, pricing of Everest here in Australia actually surprised me. I thought it was gonna be a whole lot more expensive, especially when you look at stuff like the Prado, which caps out at about $90,000 here in Australia. So the entire Everest range will kick off with the Ambiente, which is priced at just under $53,000. The Ambiente and the next level up, which is called the Trend, are both gonna be available as either four by two, which is two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or four by four, which is a full-time automatic four wheel drive system that's also capable of operating as a two wheel drive. We then step up to the Sport and the Platinum. Both the Sport and Platinum are available only as all wheel drive and only with Ford's new V6 diesel engine. And the entire range caps out at just under $78,000 for the top specification Platinum. You may think that's expensive, but I actually think that is good value for money. So Ford has bumped up towing capacity to three and a half tons and coupled with the turbocharged V6 diesel engine, seven seats, it is actually pretty price competitive when you look at the rest of the vehicles in this segment. You're not really getting anything else that offers a V6 diesel in there, which gives you enough headroom if you are actually towing at or near capacity. And just a recap on the engines, the four cylinder, it's a two litre twin turbocharged diesel, makes 154 kilowatts of power and 500 Newton meters of torque. And the six cylinder is a turbocharged three litre V6 diesel that makes 184 kilowatts of power and 600 Newton meters of torque. And both of those are mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. It is worth pointing out as well that you do have a rear differential lock so that can be engaged using the center display on the car and then in addition to that you have a stack of drive modes that are available as well depending on the variant. These drive modes include normal, eco, tow and haul, slippery, mud ruts and sand. And on four by four models above the entry level Ambiente, you also get an off-road screen that includes things like your drive line and electronic diff lock uh, distribution, steering angle, vehicle pitch and roll angles, and an off-road features button that kind of has all of that information in there. You can also get a surround view camera on some of these variants, which uh, just gives you a better view of what's going on. When we did our off-road driving, which you'll see shortly, the off-road camera gives you great vision over a crest. So it means that if you are cresting a big hill or an ascent, you're gonna be able to see what's over the edge there before you can physically see over the bonnet, which I think is a really good feature. Let's talk about your capacity. So I mentioned that 3,500 kilograms of brake towing capacity, that's gonna be available on the entire Everest range, regardless of whether you go down the path of four by four or four by two. Payload is up to 741 kilograms. GVM, which is your gross vehicle mass, is up to 3,150 kilograms. Finally, your GCM, which is your gross combination mass, is 6,250 kilograms across the entire range. Now, it is worth keeping in mind that those figures will dictate how much payload you can have inside the car when you are towing 3,500 kilograms. So do make sure that if you go to capacity with one of these, that you're not overloading the vehicle itself with payload. Towing wise, you're able to option a tow bar across the entire range. That also comes with an electronic brake controller that is inside the car, natively sort of integrated into that. I think that's a great feature and we'll see this on Ranger as well. It just takes some of the complexity out of having a trailer attached to the car. And the interesting thing as well is that the trailer coverage system that's in this vehicle allows you to input the size of the trailer that you're towing with. So everything from 2.4 to 10 meters. Now, the reason that's important is it's able to customize your blind zone monitor to tell you when you have vehicles in your blind spot, including the trailer length. And I think that is such a great innovation, it makes changing lanes and all that sort of stuff much easier when you can't actually see 
all the way down the end of the trailer and how much space you have between that and the cars next to you. Now, in terms of the other safety tech, I'm not gonna run through all of it, but I will say that it does come with nine airbags and that means there's a center airbag and that is the requirement for a five-star ANCAP safety rating. So this hasn't been crash tested yet, but I suspect that it will be crash tested pretty much as soon as it comes out. And I'm hoping that it does deliver a five-star safety rating because this is ultimately a family car. Just on the standard feature list, uh, if you do wanna see every single feature that's gonna come in every single one of these specs, you can see the Car Expert website where we have a news story specifically on this. You can scroll down and have a look at the link in the description for that. But I'll run you through some of the highlights that I thought were pretty cool uh, in some of these specs. So at the entry level, you're getting a set of 17 inch alloy wheels, but in addition to that, you're getting a 10.1 inch SYNC 4 infotainment display. That is a big display. And if you have a look at the rest of the competitors in this segment like Prado, it all just feels so dated in comparison to this. And to think that you're getting you know, the big screen in the entry level, I think is really cool. Uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it will be fully featured there in terms of your smartphone connectivity. And that also comes with a wireless phone charger. Love the fact that you're getting Ford Pass Connect with an embedded modem. What that means is you can start your car from virtually anywhere in the world. We've tested this tech before on Ford's other models and it typically works pretty well. So. Great to see that is included there. Dual zone climate control as well. So a stack of really impressive equipment. As you move up to the trend, which is the next level above the Ambiente, you're getting things like privacy glass. And I know it sounds silly, but privacy glass is typically just for high-end models. So it's good to see that Ford is actually putting that in the lower end of the Everest range. It'll mean the car looks and feels just a little bit more premium than I guess every other SUV on the road. You also get seven seats with the Trend. So I don't know how much room there is gonna be in the third row, but if it's like any other SUV in this segment, it's gonna be fairly cramped and probably just a kid only zone. So I'll be testing that out when we finally get our hands on the car. Then in addition to that, you're also getting the bigger infotainment display here too. So it's a 12 inch screen instead of the 10 inch screen. This is again, just better for things like your navigation, your smartphone mirroring. It also means that it comes with those extra four x four modes if you do go down the path of four x four on the trend variant. As you step up to the Sport, it supersizes the wheels. So they go to a 20 inch black alloy wheel. And with the Sport, this is all about, I guess, just looking different to the rest of the Everest range. So they've got black trim highlights. You've got a 10 speaker sound system. You've got power uh, driver's seat with memory, power passenger seat as well, and heated and cooled seats too. So really is just giving you that big step up in terms of features above and beyond the trend. It also comes exclusively with the V6 diesel. So you're paying extra for the bigger engine, plus also some of those style highlights, but it all really caps off with the platinum. This thing is just loaded with technology and features. So 21 inch alloy wheels, the matrix LED headlights, which will make driving this car at night all the more easier. You get the panoramic sunroof. It also comes with a bigger driver display ahead of the drivers so that takes up that entire section. 12 speaker B&O play sound system. So much better sound system. If you like your beats, you're going to uh, enjoy having that. Surround view camera and then some autonomous driving functions like your parking assistant. Uh, which I think is gonna be handy if you are a little bit intimidated by parking something this size. Also love the fact that it gets interior ambient lighting. So it should mean that it's nice and cozy when the kids are in there as well. I wanna to touch quickly on some of the optional equipment. And this is something that they first brought in with the previous generation of the Everest. And it means that if you are into off-road driving, you're able to then option an off-road pack for the car that will make it better for driving off-road. So uh, in Ambiente, if you have the 4x4 model, you can go down the path of all-terrain tires. They also then make that to 18 inch alloy wheels and give you that spare alloy wheel as well. That all-terrain tire is then available on the rest of the Everest range, even on platinum. So you can bump your wheel size down to 18 inch with all terrains if you are serious about doing some off-road driving. And that's something that pretty much none of the other competitors in this segment offer. You don't have like a highway terrain tire and then an off-road tire that you can pick from when you are ordering the car and have them interchangeable. The other good news as well is that Trend and Sport can also be optioned with the surround view camera with zone lighting. The zone lighting is interesting because it means that you're able to have vision around the car when you go camping. And I think this is one of the cool features they introduced with Ranger, having it 
flow onto Everest and having the ability to option that across the lower models is also good news. So uh, look, I think this is a really feature packed vehicle. They've really been quite smart with the way they've fitted all the standard equipment and the options to these. And in addition to all of this, you can go down the path of getting ARB accessories. On the color front, you've got seven colors to pick from with the blue lightning color, which is uh, I guess synonymous with sport only available on the sport model. And all of the colors except white are prestige colors and they're gonna cost you an additional $675. So that gives you just a bit more information on the Everest over and above our last video. Again, if you do want more details, scroll down and have a look at the link in the description below where you'll see our news story on the Everest with everything you need to know about it. Now, what's the Everest like behind the wheel? So we had the chance to drive a pre-production car at Ford's Proving Ground. It was a very, very brief drive, but it was a drive around Ford's off-road circuit. We had the chance to benchmark it against the previous generation Everest to see exactly how it felt like and the differences there. So uh, this is an interesting little track. So within Ford's big oval, they actually have this purpose-built off-road facility where they're able to tune things like the hill descent control, uh, the stability controls, the traction control systems, and the diff lock as well. Our first challenge was a really steep hill. So it's a 60% gradient. And to put that into degree terms, it's around 30 degrees. Now, if you do want a comparison, something like Log Mountain is around 30 degrees as well. And this is all quite loose, uh, dusty dirt and gravel. So there isn't a great deal of traction. You need to attack it with a bit of speed. And then as you get closer to the top, you just keep on the throttle so it doesn't roll backwards because that would be an absolute disaster. So I sunk the slipper in and and it flew up there. So we didn't really have a great deal of traction loss. And the deal with this V6 diesel is that you don't have to dive back through the, through the gears and sort of rev the crap out of it. The entire course was done in low range. And I think what surprised me the most here that it, it worked with the 10 speed auto really well. So normally when you go to low range, everything is just much slower. It's very revvy and peaky. And especially with a gearbox that has lots of gears, you can be hunting a lot. But the way that they've programmed this is quite clever. So it doesn't have to dive back through the gears. It's able to lean on its torque band. And when we're climbing something like this 60% gradient, even though I have my foot in the throttle, it isn't going crazy and shifting gears as we're climbing up the hill. So I thought that was a pretty impressive setup. And next challenge was a kind of offset breakover. And the way this works is you approach it, the top of the car comes over and then the back lifts. Now, if you don't have enough speed here, what you can find is the car doesn't have any points of traction. We discovered this when we did our medium SUV off-road test. If you do get two wheels up in the air, if there is no diff lock, it will basically just spin the wheels all day long and you won't go anywhere. With this, we had low range and also the rear diff lock active. When you do break over that little hill, you're able to just lean on the throttle with the rear diff locked. It's able to rotate the wheel with traction to get it over that brake over. And it means that you're not sitting there spinning the wheels and doing anything that is going to prevent you from moving. So that seemed to work quite well and it was quite quiet as well inside the car. There were no big thunks or clunks as the rear diff lock engaged or actuated. So that wasn't too bad. Our next hill was a 60% descent. So it was basically the one that we went up, but in reverse where we got to uh, basically evaluate the hill descent control. Now, the good thing here is that Ford allows you to customize the descent speed. And that means when you are going down the hill, you can adjust the speed as you go. There are some vehicles in this segment that don't allow you to customize the descent speed at all. And it means that sometimes if they are too quick, you are in free fall and you need to take over yourself. In my opinion, I would prefer to just be doing the braking all on my own, but for some people who do want hill descent control, this is probably one of the better systems, but ultimately for me, I just wanna manually select a gear and then ride the brake myself so that I can be confident in the speed and know that it is all locked in and I'm in charge of where it's going. It did kind of flare up as we got over the hill and the hill descent control activated, but it all was pretty subdued and then we hit the bottom uh, at a low speed. So I was pretty sort of happy with how all of that went. And I will just point out as well, engaging all the four wheel drive modes is pretty straightforward. If you do rely on the automatic drive modes, which I think a lot of people will if they're not really all that confident with four wheel driving, you just select the mode that you want and it'll recommend whether you need to lock a diff or put it into low range. Or if you're just like me and you just wanna do it all yourself, you have the ability to just go into low range, lock the rear diff and, and away you go. So it is catered for both novices and people who know exactly what they're doing. Now. 
We will take this to our own off-road location. This was obviously a controlled environment by Ford. They literally developed the car here, so you would think if it doesn't work here, they're in trouble. So we will take it to our own location to test it out ourselves and see exactly how well it works with a production car when we finally get our hands on it. But I thought this was a good taste of exactly how it went. Now, let me know if you have any questions about any of the specs or anything that we've talked about in this video or how it drives off-road. Let me know in the comments section below. Have you ordered an Everest? What is your wait time at the moment? I'm hearing some extraordinary wait time, so I'm keen to see exactly how long you're gonna have to wait before you get your hands on one. If you did like this video, please make sure you like it and share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.